Wow, we've made it quite some distance into this series, and first I want to congratulate you for making it this far. We're going to take a break from the GraphQL stuff and all the other junk we've been working on, and we're going to move on to something new called Next.js. Now, I was really tempted to put some pun in here about this being our next topic, but I just decided to spare you but I had to tell you about the pun so that you at least knew that there was a pun that I could have said. So what in the world is Next.js and what are we gonna be doing over the next couple of videos? Well, first, I just wanted to mention that we're gonna be exploring a little bit of everything in the upcoming episodes. You see, I want this React series to kind of be like a really decent overview of the different possibilities of things you can do with React. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be taking a look at some server side stuff. We already did some server stuff with Django, but now we're going to look at Next.js. You can find it at nextjs.org and this has the React framework for production. They do make it very easy to bring your app into production. They make it very easy to do hybrid static and server rendering, which we're gonna talk about what in the world that means. But I'll tell you up front, it's very cool. They also got TypeScript support and all these other bundling and prefetching and all that stuff. The main thing you're going to want to know about is this static rendering and server side rendering. If you take a look at a React application, you might notice this flashing as the page is loading. And if your server is really slow, well, it might take a while. It's really just loading showing up for a few seconds. Now, in most scenarios, this isn't the end of the world, but what if we could move this loading over to the server so we can make it the server's responsibility to get any data that we need for the page. With this data preloaded on the server, we can often make our pages static and cache them and improve our SEO. So those are two potential benefits. The third benefit is avoiding that flash of the loading, which ultimately improves the user experience. So what am I on about this SEO thing? Well, if we take a look at our page source, you can see we have the structure of a web page, but none of our information is actually showing up. We have the body, and then we have the div ID root, which is where all of our content should go. So if a search engine bot or some kind of crawler took this page and tried to analyze what was going on on our page, they would have absolutely no idea. So the whole idea behind Next.js and static and server rendering is to do all of that ahead of time on the server and then send the final result to the client. This will also give us a React-like environment, so you're gonna be very familiar with the way to work with things, but since it's on the server, we can do things like have secret keys and not have to worry about those being exposed in the browser. All the data fetching is going to be done server side and the client just gets the data already in the HTML page. So earlier on, we used APIs that were open and did not require an API key. I did this intentionally because I didn't wanna have the key on the client. Well, now you can have that key using Next.js and you can even connect to databases directly. None of that's going to be exposed to the client, the person viewing your web page. So what we're gonna be doing over the next couple of videos is basically recreating some of the functionality we've already built in the series, but we're going to be using Next.js. This will give you all the foundation you need to start building out larger applications. So just like NPX Create React app, there's also a Create Next app version. So we will use this one, TypeScript. If you are just jumping in and you didn't watch the TypeScript videos, don't worry, we're going to be explaining anything you need as you go. And this will just help catch any issues at compile time. So this is the line we're going to use and we will issue this in the terminal. Now, as a prerequisite, you are going to need Node. If you have used NPX for Create React app, you should be good to go. So here we are in the terminal, navigate to a path where you want to put your code and say npx create next app. And then they have at latest, although I've seen it without that as well. And then dash dash TypeScript. Going through this, this will require you to create a project name, customers, and it may ask you if you want to download or install anything required for this command. So I've already done it before, so I didn't get any prompts like that, but it did create the application and initialized a Git repository. So now we should be able to open that location in an editor such as Visual Studio Code. And now we can take a brief look at the Explorer. It's gonna be pretty similar to what you're familiar with with React, but there are going to be a few differences. So first off, Everything is organized in pages. So we have an index.tsx page. This is kind of like what is going to be shown when you visit the web page for the first time, which we should talk about how to actually open the application. We will run a new terminal and I'm just going to do everything embedded inside of Visual Studio Code here. So what we will do is say npm run dev. 
which is a little bit different than what you might be familiar with npm start. This is the command you will want to issue when you're using Next.js. Now, in my case, I said port 3000 is in use, so it defaulted to 3001. I just went ahead and canceled the other server I had running on 3000, so I'm going to reissue that command. Now it's on localhost 3000. Now let's take a look at this site. It's going to look something like this with some quick links to get started. Now, a few differences in this code from what you might be familiar with from earlier videos. First off is the way the component is defined. This is still a function component. They are just using an arrow function. So for consistency's sake, we will switch over to arrow functions for our Next.js content. So basically we're defining a function called home and this is of type next page. So this is the TypeScript part of this. And this is a function with no parameters and this is the function body. And then at the end, we're going to have an export default home. So what I want to do now is show a little bit of a difference when it comes to viewing the page source for a Next.js application versus a React application. We can select everything inside of this div and we are just going to remove it for simplicity's sake. We're not going to need any of this. So we will delete everything inside of the div and we'll just say something like hello. And we're also not going to need this class name here either. So we'll remove that and we can get rid of these imports. So this is all we're going to have. Now taking a look at our site, we have hello. And viewing the page source, it's going to be all one giant line, but if you search in here, you should find the value hello within a div. Comparing that real quick to a React application I have open, we will say hello here. Open this on 3001 and view page source. And again, even with just static values, generating no data inside of a use effect or anything, we still don't see that plain text hello. So that's the primary difference between a Next.js application and a React application. Now you may be curious how this works if whatever you're rendering depends on some data, such as data from an API endpoint. For this, we're going to use some different functionality, specifically this thing called get static props, which will be used to do any of the fetching ahead of time on the server. Now there's actually two different types of static processing. So we have static generation, which is what we're looking at now. And then there's server side rendering, which is slightly different. In this, the HTML is generated on each request. This will be common if you have frequently updated data or for some reason are unable to produce static content ahead of time. So just to make sure everybody's clear on the vocabulary, static means unchanging. The value is decided. This is similar to static typing in programming languages. You decide the type of a variable ahead of time. While well, static content in web pages means you already have all the values filled in to the HTML and that file can then be sent to the client. Server side rendering is similar, but the difference is that it doesn't have a static file already made. Instead, you make a request to the server. The server then calculates what that page should be on the fly and then sends it to the client. Every single request, that processing is going to be happening. So you still get that benefit of not having that loading flash up inside of a regular React application, but you're not going to get the benefit of having static files and static content, which could be distributed to content distribution networks, CDNs, which keep a copy of those files and deliver them very quickly to people who request things from your web pages. So a quick summary of these differences, static generation, which is recommended, the HTML is generated at build time and will be reused on each request. It's great for pages that can be pre-rendered ahead of a user's request. Server-side rendering, on the other hand, the HTML is generated on each request. Because server-side rendering results in slower performance than static generation, use this only if absolutely necessary. So in the next video, we're gonna be talking about how to set up pages and routing inside of Next.js. Very simple, especially compared to how you have to do it inside of React with a browser router and setting up all those paths. You don't have to do any of that in Next.js. It's all going to be automatic based on conventions. So stay tuned for that. And by the end of that video, we should have some basic navigation set up for our site. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.